Hello, today's episode is called Horse. This is an episode about paranoia, friendship, and eventually honesty about mortality. There are two gunshots, but neither is fatal, and a fantasy of meat. This is Cow Children. Cow pokes, cow folks, every kind of cow children. Cow girls, cow boys, any non binary. Cow gals, cow pals, hoping no brigands will kill them. Cow kin, cow skin, whatever cow you be. All cow children, every afflicted pilgrim. Countless millions, any demography. Cow pokes, cow folks, every kind of cow children. Cow kin, cow skin, whatever cow you be. They call this the tale of Cowboy Joe. Cowboy Joe was encased in mutton in an adhesive accident at an experimental abattoir. The lamb pieces stuck fast to his skin and hair, leaving him to resemble a man of astonishing size and musculature. People talk about second skin, but Cowboy Joe discovered not nearly enough about second meat. Try as he might to escape or be released, the mutton proved permanent. None could discern, nor could he feel, where mutton met man. Although entirely enclosed, he could see, breathe, and hear through this dense outer flesh, and did what he could to live as ordinary a life as possible. Nonetheless, it was for the most part extraordinary. His was a unique predicament, encasement in meats. Was at first a struggle against gravity, against social convention, and against all sanitary practices. Cowboy Joe was universally known, and universally wondered at. But his curious affliction also came with unanticipated boons. When he bled, as sometimes he did bleed, it gave the meat life and power. When by nature he might have been weakened, he became the strongest man in the West. During hot summers, sometimes a barrel of blood was necessary to retain his powers. The folk of his town would bring him blood sacrifices in exchange for his mighty arm. Not only did he live a life, he prospered and he grew. More people made more meat, which in turn required more blood. Most folk were happy to grant a donation, and his greater strength allowed him to be the defender of an ever larger area, until one day his mass grew such that the muscles could not sustain their own weight, and he collapsed in on himself and expired. It was widely debated whether eating the remaining flesh would be cannibalism. It was that or fire, so the layers of mutton were carved away and fed to pigs, lions, and prisoners. It would be fine, reasoned the folk of local towns, so long as they stopped short of cutting the human core. However, no core was found. Cowboy Joe was in the end discovered to be nothing but mutton through and through. There was no skeleton, no organs, no evidence that a human heart ever beat within the gigantic hero. Had the human flesh been rewritten to match the meat? What had become of his mind? Whither his soul? Some started to ask, was there ever a Cowboy Joe in the first place? There was little chance to philosophize, since on news of the death of the Mutton Titan, the Wild West swarmed with angry bandits, at last given freedom to commit the most violent and heinous acts in public. These criminal rebellions did not last, however, as in a single bloody hour, all of the West's pigs, lions, and prisoners came forth and ate the bandits, after which life returned to normal. This is Cow Children, True Adventures from the Actual West. Today's Cow Child is... Horse. Well, I'm riding into town... And I'm riding on a horse If he ever fell down, down, down Well, what would I request to? I 
fear I'd be dealing narcotics and killing. I'm not excited by the prospect of a relapse. No, sir. No, no, my horse he is a hero. His horse, he is a hero. With him in my life. With him in his life. I Love don't need me. any Love other heroin. Any other heroin. No, no. No, no, and if he ever died, he ever died I don't know what I'd do. We don't know what he'd do. Pretty like <laughs> Every horse is needed. I woke up bleeding but alive, and that horse was gone. Hey, horse. I was nursed back to health, and I looked everywhere for my horse, and I shouted for him, Horse! Horse! Where you gone, horse boy? I was asked if I might uh, have have a bit of a uh, have a bit of a glimpse around just to 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 check your key parts and portions. Where you gone? Cowboy Joe was encased in mutton lumps, shapes, and self-sustaining sausages. Little person, your grandparent is not dead. Wherever it was, he couldn't hear me. First of all, I will say, do not suppose because you cannot see me that I cannot see you. For grandparents. Never die. The glue cannot tell the difference between flesh of a man and a hunk of lamb. Howdy. This is the truth. The name's Joe. I tell you the scientific truth. Let me tell you a thing about justice under my jurisdiction. Could you could you open up your ears a little? They are your best asset. Listen, listen. Capture everything, all the sounds, and especially the directions. Now write this down, or commit it to memory. One hand, then the other, became clad in bite-sized lamb portions. Spend the rest of my life. Accumulating and aggregating. Hoping I would see that horse again. Soon there was no clear divide. Before I die. Between finger and hand. It goes hand in paw with this. An arm and torso. Nobody has ever exhumed a grandparent. When my dog ran away... I didn't go looking. Have you had your ears looked at before? If I, if I might just, uh, I should say I'm no veterinarian, but I am at the same time. Friends who initially rushed to aid him held back. That's the best veterinarian, this side of Hay Horse, Dump Crampo, that sort of area. Because I don't go looking for trouble. Trouble comes to me. To exhume a body is to dig it up from the grave. Like conjoined infants or a fleshy rat king. I ain't no detective. That horse be so disappointed in me. The graves of grandparents are all... Empty. I must say, your breath is quite ordinary. They slip out invisibly to live more lives. Or they spin, spin, spin at such a rate they bore a hole into the centre of the earth. That's good. It's always good uh, to hear that a thing is ordinary, medically speaking. I make myself good and visible. Out front of saloon. When his hands failed him, and indeed failed to be hands... He applied the traditional attack for meat, the teeth. Did you know that there are specialist dentists for horses? Open up, yes. Yeah, it's a funny job, in a way. Let's say again. Every word is God's scientific truth. Animals, well, your teeth are rather self-sharpening. Alas, his lips were sealed with white meat. Carrots, if that's not too obvious. I don't know how any horse dentist is quite able to make a living out west. I tried to get a new horse, but I couldn't. They'd need to travel, I think, and to attend show horses more than work horses and journey horses. I got a zebra. Did you ever meet a shire horse? It was not the same. Uh, they have the most excellent legs, trousers, flared ankles, pants. It was not the same. Huge creatures, power, force. They look alike, but they produce a lot, a lot more milk. Not to diminish the horsepower of the majority, but Shire horses are an experience. Yes, draft horses. I made myself a liar. He survived that day. Just your grandparent is alive. And free. Now you bring me a malfeasor and I'll tell him. I'll have nobody to blame. You have rights. Just. And hang him high. But you didn't come here for a science lecture. You came here to commune with the ghosts of the living. You'll find me there all day, chewing on a pickle in the afternoons. It would be, so he said. Your grandparent. Like pursuing lost youth. Your grandparent says. He was patient through it all. Thank you. The allure of the transgressive. I made myself a liar. Thank you, and goodbye. I got a new horse, but it's not the same. It's like having a new daddy. I will look at your eyes, if I might. What he had lost in delicacy, he had gained in substance. And be happy. Chewing on half a pickle. Where once his body and mind had been swayed and buffeted by the passage of months and seasons. Be 
happy, be happy, so... Is that how slow I eat him? For all the impracticality of his engorged animal arms, he could be glad with his whole heart. Happy in your lives. I got a zebra. Oh yes, to say these things are purely decorative. One day, he didn't awaken. You will find another grandparent. They are handsome things, so... Uh, Get a dog, or a cat. They're similar animals, but they produce a lot more milk. <laughs> Whatever you're doing, just just keep doing it. And treat them as you treated me. It happens sometimes, to anyone. They're actually more similar to cows. Which is to say, well... And if there's a moral here, it's that you might die tomorrow for no reason. The ghost is alive! It's never the same. Alive! And gone. It is selfish of me to miss. Gone! So, uh... He is someone else's friend today. <laughs> Whatever you're doing, just, just keep doing it. I hope whoever has horse values him alive. Keep those legs going, horse. The sun is at its highest and its hottest, or it will be in around 20 minutes. I know that. I'm sure you do. But we'll both be glad of a little rest and refreshment. Do you think we'll find a man in blue in this town? For once, I hope not. The trail has gone cold, and I'm very nearly out of bullets. No, we'll make a quiet stop here for the rest of the day, and slip out first thing in the morning. A little to the left now, horse. Further, further. We want to go around those barrels, not into them. Sorry. There you go. And curve back to the right. Are you talking to your horse, ma'am? The name's Clayton. Just a professor passing through. And my horse happens to be blind. Hey, I'm sure I've heard tell of a blind horse, I think. Many horses go blind, or are born that way. You'd do well to forget this one and go on your way, unless you wish to invite trouble. Now, what was it? You should go. What was that? I think it was my horse telling you to go, so perhaps you ought. Run while you can. Eh? You should heed his words. He's an anxious creature, and he's probably worried for your sake. He has a good heart and despises violence. Leave us be! Ah, the talking blind horse, eh? Well, I'll not poke my nose any further. I know when to back off. Sorry to trouble you. Just ahead and to the right now, horse. I was worried you were going to fight him. Not at all. I'm not here for a war. I thought he recognised us, and he'll tell the man in blue. You're a very paranoid specimen, horse. You see a trap in everything. This isn't a trap, is it? No. Now over to the right. I'm going to tie you to this post and talk to a contact in the saloon in front of us. But that's the way the man went. You're not going to go after him, are you? Everybody goes to the saloon. Stay put, and I'll try not to be long. There's a water trough about a yard to your left. I like water. Hey there, horsey. Howdy. What's your name? I'm Cindy. Who brought you to town? Professor Clayton. We're on an adventure, but today's our day off. I want to be an adventurer when I grow up. Sometimes she gets into fights and I hear horrible things. I'm glad I can't see them. Are you blind? So is my auntie. She's the mayor. What colour is your hair? Marmalade. Like my cat. A cat bit me on the neck once. I think it was a cat. It really hurt. Anything from behind the counter, Prof? I oughtn't, this early in the day. I should attend to horse, or the hot sun will give him one of his imaginative turns. No problem. Did you get your business sorted? Yes, I think so. I'm sorry I had to arrange so much of this by post, but my constant companion has prying ears. And too many secrets make him anxious. I know those footsteps. That's... Hello, Clayton. You should rest before evening. I'm not tired. I'm not an elderly horse. I have my legs and I can go fast. This is exactly why you need to rest. So you don't get anxious. It isn't a trap, is it? To turn me into sausages? No, horse. How many times? I don't want to be sausages. When I die, leave me out for the vultures at the Towers of Silence. We've discussed your funeral more times than I quite care for, horse. If it comes to it, I'll arrange it exactly as requested, but it's a long way off yet and you know I'll likely predecease you. Especially if you know who catches us unawares. Don't say that, Clayton! I don't want you to die first. One of us has to. 
and you know how cheap life can be in the desert. Here we are, straight forward into this barn. Fresh straw and a good temperature. You're not going looking for that man we met. Have yourself a nap and try not to fret. It's got dark and Clayton still isn't back. I need new shoes. If she's not going to turn me into sausages, why hasn't she replaced my shoes? Does it hurt having them attached? Who is it? Who's there? I'm, uh... A talking puma. Pumas can't talk. Neither can most horses. Does it hurt with the shoes? No. No. My hooves are made of something like glue. Like toenails. The new shoes cleave to it, and the nails are only hammered into the hard hoof, so I can't feel them. I suppose it makes a big difference when you walk. Well, for one thing, it's a lot louder. It's a good feeling. I'm sure it makes you proud. Pride isn't good, but it does make me a little bit proud. Do pumas have hooves? No. We have paws and claws and non-shoes for our soft paw pads. Are you really a puma? In a barn? Your smile seems familiar. I thought you were blind. I can hear when people are smiling and talking. Why are you in a barn, horse? You're clever enough to talk. Shouldn't you be in there with the folk? No. I stay where there's straw. I hope they're not going to turn me into sausages. Someone's outside. Horse, I heard a door. Can I ask you to do a friend a favour? I won't tell them you're here. I know people don't like pumas, but you have to promise you won't eat any of them. For you, friend, I can make that promise. Now let me creep back into the shadows. I can hear them creeping outside. Puma, will you protect me if they come in here to take me away to the meat shop? You're allowed to eat the butcher! That would be all right. And I heard someone saying, shush, they are doing something secret. But Clayton says she won't ever let me become sausages. Clayton says, if I concentrate carefully, I won't get too worried. Think, horse, think. Not a sausage. Not a sausage. Not a sausage. They're opening the doors. Happy birthday, horse. Oh, It is my birthday. It took a bit of organising, but we have a lot of your friends here. Sheepy and Pony and John Stenderton and Mrs Biscuit the Hedgehog. So you weren't really going to kill the man we met on the road? No! I thought the idiot would blow your big surprise once he very slowly put two and two together about a blind horse visiting. He's the local baker and made cakes for the party. Now, we have straw cake and strawberry cake, and Maria the blacksmith has some strong new shoes just for you. I don't know what to say. Thank you, Clayton. Oh, oh, I made a new friend as well. Oh, but I can't tell you about him. Who do you mean? His smile did seem familiar. Oh, no. That was a warning shot. Everybody stay where you are. It's him. Now I know. Throw down your gun, Professor. At last, it seems I have you on the back foot. Damn! And damn you, Ferdinando. God haunt you for this. What is this ridiculous setup? It looks like a birthday party for a horse. That's precisely what it is. We did not record this line of dialogue. Oh dear, we're all going to be turned into sausages and it's all my fault. You're safe from my ire, horse. You're a good animal and honourable and I was touched that you called me friend. But Professor Clayton is a killer. You hypocrite! Don't kill Professor Clayton! She's my best friend! Aside from anything else, you're interrupting Horse's birthday surprise. He cannot abide violence. Why not come down and have some cake? It's straw and strawberry. Nobody needs to die. Horse is more perceptive than I give him credit for. He knew there was danger afoot and I should have listened. And he says you can come down in peace. And again, he has the right idea. Why should I trust you? When you slew Sayaka, you took away the most valuable part of my life. And I could only see revenge. Our battle has torn through the West for the better part of a year. But these last months, I have invested time and energy in planning a peaceful and pleasant birthday party for Horse, a good friend and compatriot. I have committed atrocities. You, you have driven me to this violence. 
but horse has never done anybody harm. I will not sully his special day by gunning down someone he calls friend. Throw away your gun and come down here in a spirit of peace. I don't know. This could be a trick. Come down, Puma. My name is Ferdinando. I've always called you the man in blue. I'm not even wearing blue. I hung up my uniform long ago. I'm coming down. I may not trust the professor, but I trust you, friend. Well, here I am. Are you going to kill me at last, Professor Clayton? Not today. Would you like some cake? Very much, horse. I'll ask someone to bring you a plate. So what is this, Fiona? A birthday truce? And we're back at each other's throats in the morning? If we can stop the fight for today... You have taken so much from me. I think neither of us wants to keep fighting. I do. I wish we could be friends as we were, but I cannot forgive what you did. You slew my brothers. They fell into their own trap. But you are right. That was my doing. I'm sorry, Ferdinando. But if we can call this the end of the hunt, I would like that. Then it is over. Oh, this is a happy birthday. Would you like some banana milkshake juice? Oh, yes. Which way's the trough? It's over here on your right. My auntie has another present for you. She says you're going to get an award for bringing peace. It's an honorary title and a little plaque. I've never won anything before. I hope it's nothing embarrassing. We'll get you some carrots, too. This town recognises you as the Sheriff of the Week. The Sheriff of the Week is Malay Idumea, played by Rob Reed. Let me tell you a thing about justice under my jurisdiction. Write this down or commit it to memory. When my dog ran away, I didn't go looking. Because I don't go looking for trouble. Rubble comes to me. I ain't no detective. I make myself good and visible out front of the saloon. You bring me a Malfeasor. I'll tell him you have rights and hang him high. You'll find me there all day, chewing on a pickle in the afternoons, chewing on half a pickle. Because that's how slow I eat them. Hey up, horse! Look who else is here! When they said there was a sheriff of the week, I knew somehow it would be you. Long time since this old grandpappy pop has been sheriff of anything. I gotta tell you the truth, horse. But horse, I miss you so much these long years. Can you ever forgive me? Hooray! That was Cow Children, Horse, by Ben Swithin, featuring Charlie Benjamin as Horse, Rose Garrett as Professor Clayton, and Stuart Dunlop as the Man in Blue. Other voices included Rob Reed, Tom King, and Henry Lim. Tune in next time for Monkey Puzzle. And we just have time for the truth. Knock, knock. Who's there? A horse. A horse who? A horse walks into a bar and the barkeep asks, why the big horse? The reply comes, big horse, it's your birthday. The barkeep had a great birthday and lived happily until they died, which is another story. The barkeep died, interestingly enough, of nothing at all. I had a friend named Alistair who did likewise. He died apparently without any cause at all. He simply did not wake up. Now, Alistair was a peculiar character and a good-hearted one. I knew him from my church, and he once took me to a naturist swimming event in York. I remember it was the night that Rise of the Cybermen was broadcast. He would sing songs with ridiculous enthusiasm that belied the rushed nature of their composition. He would suddenly appear next to you, right next to you, and bark enthusiasm into your ear. He was... Immensely frustrating and very peculiar and very beautiful. I care a lot for Alistair, but there is nobody whose death would upset me less. Alistair enjoyed life, but sudden death would not frustrate him at all. He could be, and surely was, quite content waking up one day, not on mortal earth, but in the bosom of Christ. Being dead both suddenly and peacefully 
would suit him down to the ground and into it. But I've been aware since then. Anyone can just die. He was not slain, there was no accident or evil or deep sorrow here, or perhaps my friends misinformed me and the facts were less comfortable, but I've taken to heart that death can come quite randomly, without warning, without reason, and without excuse. Perhaps I will not wake in the morning. If so, souls, perhaps tomorrow you won't live. And you can never be sure. There is no certain confidence in anything in these lives. Let me tell you another joke, which is along the same lines. A person walks into a grocery with a fish under their arm. They ask, do you sell fish cakes? And the grocer tells them, yes. Good, says the person, indicating the fish. It's his birthday.